Welcome to this video tutorial of Hosted Control Planes. My name is Rishta Meghlani and I am the part of OpenShift team at Red Hat. In this session, I will provide an in-depth overview of HCP. So, let's begin with an overview of Hosted Control Planes, covering its use cases, supported platform, architecture, installation type and step-by-step -step installation demo. So, let's discuss about Hosted Control Planes. The OpenShift 4 hosted control plane, often referred as HCP and HyperShift, which is an architectural innovation that allows for the separation of control planes from the worker nodes in OpenShift clusters. This separation enables the control plane to be hosted independently on the managed infrastructure without the need for dedicated or physical machine. This setup makes it easier to scale saves resources and reduces the effort needed to manage everything. Let's take a closer look for the HCP architecture to gain a better understanding. Let's compare the standalone OpenShift cluster with the HyperShift. In a standalone setup, you have a single cluster consisting of the control plane nodes and the worker node pool, which can scale based on your requirements. In standalone cluster, the control plane is hosted by the dedicated group of nodes which can be physical or virtual. Whereas with the HyperShift, you have a single hub cluster from which you can create the multiple hosted cluster. So as you can see in this setup, the management cluster is accessible by the administrator or the cluster admin, whereas the hosted cluster on the other hand are used to deploy the containerized application which can be accessed by the developers or DevOps engineer. This separation also enhances the security and the compliance. Let's go over some key benefits of HCP. First is decoupled control plane. In this setup, as we discussed earlier, the control plane and the worker nodes are separated from each other and hosted on the different infrastructure, which optimize infrastructure, improves security, and reduce cost. Next is managed control plane hosting. This handles operations such as updating, scaling and ensures high availability. Then next is stronger security boundaries. The control plane components are separated from the worker nodes as we discussed which runs on a different infrastructure. This separation reduces the risk of credential leaks and accidental infrastructure changes by the admins. Lastly, centralized operation and high availability. These are some standout features for the HCP which ensures streamlined management and continuous availability. Let's explore the use case for the hosted control planes and identify its target audience. The choice depends on your specific needs. For example, while it typically takes about an hour to spin up a standalone OpenShift cluster, with HyperShift, the control plane components are ready in about half of the time. If you have a large server and want to fully utilize its resources, HyperShift allows you to run multiple hosted cluster on that. Optimizing resource usage, this is ideal for the situation where you need different clusters for different application requirements. Let's review the supported platforms for HCP. Currently, HCP installation is supported on platforms like bare metal, OpenShift virtualization, AWS, and remaining three are still in technical preview stage, technology preview stage. So these are the required OCP versions for the following platforms. For example, if your management cluster is running on the AWS and you want to create a HyperShift cluster, the version of the hosted control plane cluster depends on the management cluster. You can find more information about this in our official doc as well. Now let's look into the connectivity mechanism between HCP and compute nodes that connect the control plane component. As mentioned, the control plane pods runs in your management cluster on a separate network while the worker nodes are on an isolated network. So how does this works? The compute nodes added to the hosted cluster connects to the API URL, but the master don't directly communicate with the worker nodes. It's similar like 
how you can access the websites from the internet like google.com from your machine but no one from the internet can directly access your machines this setup uses netting which is enabled by the connectivity network architecture connectivity is an upstream component that enables secure and reliable communication between the control plane like api server management cluster and the worker nodes it ensures consistent traffic flow in the environment with limited direct connectivity such as firewalls proxy nat or respective network policy connectivity has two main components connectivity server and connectivity agent let's discuss more on it connectivity server runs in a control plane namespace typically on port 8091 and uses tcp for communication it's configured with tls certificates to ensure the encrypted traffic connectivity agent run as a daemon set on all worker nodes it establishes an outbound tcp connection to the connectivity server on the same port 8091 using tls certificate for the secure communication let me just explain the architecture of connectivity network so as you can see in this diagram we are having the management cluster where the connectivity server and the cube api server is present while the connectivity agent is deployed on the guest data plane as i mentioned earlier so when cube api server or any other control plane components needs to communicate with kubelet on the worker node the request is sent to the connectivity server which create a tunnel and tries to communicate with the connectivity agent in hypershift the connectivity server runs as the sidecar of cube api server the api server's request include the target worker node ip address and the specific port for the kubelet then the connectivity agent on each worker node initiates a tcp connection to the connectivity server on the control plane using the server's ip and port 8091 that's how the kubernetes api server communicates with the worker nodes in the workload cluster with the help of connectivity agent and connectivity server so the platform in focus today is openshift virtualization which is used to deploy hosted control planes in this setup the worker nodes run as a virtual machine which is managed by the kubevirt for this setup i am having the management cluster runs on aws api with bare metal hosts in it which are scaled via machine set the storage and load balancer services are taken care by the aws platform itself in my case but if you have other infrastructure providers load balancing must be configured manually using metal lb for the storage part persistent storage is essential for the etcd pods that will be created for the hcp to store cluster related data similar to a standard ocp cluster to ensure that the etcd database and other related data are preserved an appropriate storage class must be configured to provide persistent storage let's discuss the prerequisites for deploying hosted control planes on openshift virtualization platform first of all you need the administrator access to the ocp platform second to enable wildcard dns routes in the ocp management cluster you should run this command after that openshift virtualization and multi cluster engine for kubernetes operators should be installed from the web console also you can refer to our official documentation as well for more detailed prerequisites but in this step by step installation process we just need these prerequisites that's it so after covering the prerequisites it's important to highlight that the cluster network must be different for the management cluster and the hosted cluster unlike the other platforms kubeword doesn't support overlapping cluster networks so sharing the same network between the two can cause the conflicts or failure during deployment and in order to check the cluster network of your management cluster you can use the following command which will show you this kind of output 
and also you can check the service network as well for the management cluster by using this command and in order to check the cluster network and service network of your hosted cluster you can use the following command in this outputs you can clearly see the CIDRs of both management cluster and the hosted clusters are different now let's jump into the demo and see everything in action so I'm already logged into my management cluster with bare metal host in it so let me just quickly show you the status of cluster operator which are up and running as I showed you in a prerequisite section we have to enable wildcard DNS in our management cluster using that command let's install the operator first we will install OpenShift virtualization just install it in the meanwhile we can check its pods are up and running in a cluster or not in OpenShift CNV project where our operator gets installed once it's done we will create hyper converged as well we will keep all the parameters as default except one in inside the feature gate that is enable common boot image import parameter and let's create it now let's install another operator as well multi cluster engine for kubernetes we can check its pods as well from the cli okay it's up and running now after it gets installed we have to create multi cluster engine once it's created a pop-up is shown for refreshing web console after we refresh it we can see the local cluster option and we have to switch to the all cluster once we switch into the all cluster we have to choose create cluster here we can see the different platforms on which we can create our hosted control plane cluster so we are doing for the OpenShift virtualization first we have to add credentials to this you can give any name basically it creates the secret so I'm giving it HCP grid as of now in the default namespace we I'm keeping this default will okay I'm giving my cluster name HCP cluster cluster set as default images as 4.18.15 as my management cluster is on same version keeping this default and next here you have to give the name for your node pools from here you can increase or decrease the node pool replica as well here you can review and create your cluster so it will take some time so here you can see the status of node pool is in pending state and the HCP cluster status is in creating state from the CLI itself you can check the hosted clusters in your management cluster so here we have only one HCP cluster here we can check its namespace is created by clusters HCP cluster so let's check it OC get hosted clusters then HCP cluster hyphen n clusters So its YAML output is there. The base domain is of management cluster currently. And if you see, the platform is kubevert of hosted control plane cluster. And these are the services which gets created auth, route, connectivity, API server, load balancer. Get, now let's check the pods inside the HCP cluster. As you can see, all pods are up and running as of now. It's CD, Cube API server, Word Launcher, HCP node pools. 
So let's download the kubeconfig file to access the data plane cluster now. Let me just move it from downloads to the current directory. So it's there. By using this command export kubeconfig. Let me just export it. And if you can see here are some cluster operators which are not in ready state as of now. But after some time it will be in ready state. See. Now let me just check the node status. These are up and running as well. So if we check it, our cluster is completely provisioned and its version is 4.18.15. And the node pool status is also ready. So thank you all for your time and attention today. I hope you found this session valuable and informative. Have a great day.